What's good people, it's Jay Cactus back with another tutorial and in this video I'm going to be breaking down a hard trap and drill influence beat. It's something that I made a few months ago but it's one of my hardest beats so I wanted to show you all the process. I didn't really have an artist in mind when I made this beat, I just wanted to flex as a producer, have fun with it and just go crazy on it really. So hopefully you can take something from it and I won't waste any more time, let's jump straight into it. Alright, so this is a little bit different to my usual videos because I've already made this beat but I'm just going to play it through so you can hear it and then I'll break it down for you. That drop is so fucking cold. into a bit of a bridge here. This is so sick, man. Had a few little transitions like this. But you kind of get the idea. So I'm going to break it down for you from the beginning. So the first thing that I did was start with a sample. So I won't play the original version just because YouTube can flag that and I don't want a strike on the account. But all you do is highlight the section that you want. So get that perfect loop and then use this tool to drag it to the playlist up here. So then when you've got your sample, all I did with this one, I didn't even change the pitch, I just stretched it. So there's a couple ways you can do that. You can either right click on time and then select the number of bars you want. So I've got it on eight bars. So I just went on four first and then stretched it out. And then you can right click on pitch to reset. And that just means that even though it's stretched out, it's gonna be playing at the same pitch as the original sample. But the easier way to do it is probably just to go to mode, um, stretch mode, and then stretch it as far as you want. So I've got a few different sections as you could hear when I played the beat. Um, but the first thing that I did after that was, I think I added the snare. So let me just mute everything else. There's a lot of effects and transitions in the beat, but the first thing that I wanted was a nice bounce with these snares. So I'll play it from here. So you can hear I've got one normal snare just hitting like a standard trap beat. But then this snare, I've got a lot of snare rolls. So you can see with the velocity, they're going down, coming back up. So it's just creating a nice bounce. And then with the pan, you can see that I'm adjusting the pan. It's all even by the way. So if you're listening in headphones, I would recommend listening in headphones right now or monitors. Um, but this can just create a nice atmosphere for someone when they're listening to a beat. It just, it just sounds more epic because there's so much going on in different ears, like things flying between the left and right ear. It just sounds wild. So have a listen to the panning when you listen to these snares. Right, and then the next thing was the hi-hat. So with the hi-hat, I didn't really pan that, but I did play, no, I didn't even play with the velocity. So this one, I've just got some fast hi-hat rolls. And they kind of just complement the snare rolls. And then I had a simple open hat after this.
And then the 808, this is where I wanted to go crazy. So when you were listening to the beat, you can hear that the 808 is just like, it's like nonstop and it's just, it's just gliding all the way through it. It feels like it's sinking and coming back up. So let me play the 808 by itself. So there's a lot going on with the 808, but together it just fits perfectly with the sample. And with the kick as well. So let me show you what I did with that. So you can see I'm just playing the root note of the sample almost all the way through it, but then I'm using a lot of slides, so. So at first it's sliding down and then it's coming back up. And then it's going up, but coming back down on the next one. And then there's um, quick notes up here. And I'm only sliding it up an octave as well. Not every single time, as you can see, because some notes are hitting on A. But when I'm sliding down and back up, I'm just sliding up and down an octave. And then even when these high notes are coming, they're just up another octave. All right, and then this last bit. Just some quick slides there. And then a bit of a different 808 pattern here. So then little slides at the end are just kind of coming like up and back down. They're perfect just before drops, as you can see here. And then the last 808 pattern, you've probably seen this in some of my other videos. So I played with the pan in here. As you can see, it's going from the left to right ear. And with the velocity, it's gradually fading out as well. So I brought the slides up quite high. So just create some light effect. And obviously the kick is laid on top of that. So some quick kicks here. But I think the key to this beat was all the effects and transitions that I've used. So shout out to Skype here because he actually influenced this beat. I see him doing things like this. Um, so I've got to give credit to him. He's a, he's a sick producer. Um, but let me play some of the effects. So the first is a reverse kick from Cosmic's pack. So Cosmic's got some sick kicks as well. So I've got this effect here. Which is just a nice transition. Check out. Uh, what else have we got? A reverse hat, more transitions, a crow effect, crash, chant. So there's a lot all at one time, but that's how you're going to get that epic feel. So listen to the drop again with Check everything. Out. But then listen without any effects. Check out. It's just not the same, so I think these just add crazy amounts of energy. There's a curve here. Over here we've got some more transitions. So then crow sounds just make everything feel dark, but then those drop and crash effects, they just add Mad amounts of energy and impact and give it that epic feel. And then I've got a few breakdowns here. So I've just taken out the hi-hats. Then a little break.
So that transition makes a lot of difference. So listen to it without the transition. Still sounds good, but... Because the 808s were like sliding down and back up, when you put them transitions in, they also are kind of sliding down. The two just complement each other so well. And then them vocals are just part of the melody. So that was just a different section of the sample. So it's good to create variation. So when you're sampling something, um, you can even do it with effects or just find different parts of the sample. Chop up as many parts as you can and then see what works well in the track. So I've got like four different parts of the sample here. And then in the bridge here, one transition, just a melody. And then I've got a reverse kick and all the effects again. So this is a nice little trick. So all I've done there is put, I've cut all of the drums out and just put a laugh with all the effects as well. So just listen without the laugh. But then with. And to me, it's little bits like that that will make your track more exciting. So we're just coming back to the standard part here. And it basically repeats the same as the first half. But then at the end, I did add a switch up. So you can see I have got some automation here. And what I've done with the automation is I actually automated the tempo of the full song. So I've applied that from the master channel. So it's slowing down like the sample, the 808, the drums, everything. So have a listen to this. The 808s just sound sick because they're already sliding, but when it's happening slower, it's just, it's just more variety. The only other automation that I did is in some of the drops you can see that I've got gross beat going so I'll just play you the sample what it sounds like. So that's just a standard, it's just a one beat gate preset but then everything together. It's just little transitions like that that will make a track sound sick. All right, so for the mixing, I didn't do loads of the sample. You can see that I've got half time automated just at the beginning. So it gradually fades out just here. And then the EQ, I just left the lows in during the intro. And then because we've got the 808 kicking in straight away, that's when the EQ kicks in. So I wanted it like that so it doesn't sound too thin at the beginning, but once you've got the 808s in, you don't really need the lows from the samples. So that's all I did there. And then with the filter. Let me just play you this sample by itself. So I just created that with Love Filter. Right, so that's just before I drop. So for mixing in the sample, we've just seen half time, the EQ is literally just taking out some lows. Same with the other one, I just doubled it up. Sometimes with parametric EQ, you still get some lows cutting through. Um, so I just like to double check and take them all out. With the imager, I'll show you how wide it is. The sample was actually really wide, so I didn't need to do anything there. But sometimes I like to pull the bass frequencies mono because when you've got bass frequencies in the stereo field, sometimes it sounds a bit muddy, so that's all I've done there. Um, I've shown you the gross beat preset and the love filter. 808, all I did here was just boost certain frequencies 
I don't know, it just made this 808 sound sick. So just have a play around with the EQ, boost some certain frequencies. Sometimes I like to just swoop through until I find a frequency that sounds good and I'll boost it up. And because this beat is just like an epic trap beat, I just exaggerated it anyway. And that's just helping the bass kind of cut through on phones and stuff as well, especially when you're getting up to like the low mids. Um, I've also got the kicks side chains to the 808, as you can see. Quite a bit. For the hi-hat, in the beginning, I'm just using this tiny bit of reverse. So that's just reversing the hi-hats a little bit at the beginning. And then you can see I'm using sound toys, um, like fast shimmer pants. That means it's like flying between the left and right ear, so. You can hear it if you listen close. Nothing on the open hat. I've got delay and reverb set up in auxiliary sense, just so I didn't have to add them to every single one, but I only actually added reverb to one of the snares, which is here. You can see I've just increased it by like, I don't know, 10%. And the effects and the crashes, I've just taken out some lows. You honestly don't need to do a lot, not much on these. And then when it comes to some of the effects, like the chants and the laughs, I've just added some delay. I could have added it there, but I wanted them a little bit different for each sound just on this section. And then same with the crow and my tag as well. And then on the master channel, all I've done is added a soft clipper because I was driving the kick through. So what I usually do with the kicks is, I'll, you can turn up the volume from wherever you want. You can click into it and turn it up there or you can turn it up from the channel volume and then have a soft clipper on the master channel. And then you can play with the, um, the volume on the actual kick just until you get enough punch and enough saturation that you want. If you do it too much, it's gonna sound like real boxy. Um, sometimes that might sound nice, it just depends on the track. So I'll play around with that until you find a sound that you like, and that's how you can get that kick smacking through. So yeah, this was a little bit different to my usual videos. Usually I'll cook up from scratch and show you that process, but I thought I'd switch it up today and show you a beat that I've already made because it's one of my favorite beats. I just wanted to have fun with this one and flex on the 808s and everything. So hopefully you were feeling it. If you do like this kind of video, then let me know in the comments or if you want me to continue with just um, cooking up from scratch and showing the whole process, then let me know too. Or if you just want a combination of them both. And if you don't know already, I'm releasing a free loop kit. It's gonna be drill melodies. Um, there's gonna be 20 melodies, which are all royalty free. And I was gonna make it a paid kit, but because everyone's been showing crazy amounts of love and the subscribers are coming in quite quick this month, I thought, right, if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I'll drop it completely free. So if you haven't already, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.